The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, Teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. It's very easy to fall into the trap of denying that you have any guilt or a problem. One of my favorite ones is uh, the guy who sat in front of me who was in denial over the fact he was an alcoholic. And he said, but Father, he said, it's my wife's fault. I wouldn't drink if it wasn't for her. It's really easy to blame it's really easy to cast the attention onto somebody else. And this is the beauty of the sacrament of reconciliation. You've got to say it out loud in front of somebody. And you open yourself wide to the fact that you could be slanting things in your favor. Maybe to try to make yourself feel better and not so guilty. But... Sometimes guilt is good when it makes you turn to the Lord. In this case, it is blatantly apparent that Judas is being called out by Jesus. As we talked about uh, in the last two days, there's been two other occasions where that becomes clear for Judas. And in all cases, including this one, he's in denial over the fact that he is going to do something horrible. When asked, the, when asked the question to Jesus, the other disciples, surely it is not I, Lord, they all call Jesus Lord. They affirm his divinity. They affirm that it's only God who can forgive. And what they are doing is, when they're saying, surely not I, Lord, they're placing themselves at Jesus' disposal so that he could say, possibly, yes, it is you. And he will do this, as this passage goes, he will do this to Peter himself shortly. You will deny me three times. However, Judas' response is a little bit different. Judas says, surely it is not I, Rabbi, he does not call Jesus Lord. He sees Jesus only as the teacher. And because he does not see Jesus as Lord, 
He doesn't have access to something only God can give. Forgiveness, reconciliation, and mercy. What happened, and he's, he's also in denial over his guilt. He is not admitting that I am doing something wrong. And so this denial places an impasse, an impediment between he and the one who can forgive him. I have met many people who, when looking at the cross, that triggered a reaction. And the reaction was, I have done so much to offend God. And then what follows is, I can't believe that he would love me so much. The cross and looking at the cross and experiencing the passion this week may bring us face to face with great discomfort because of our own part in sin and because of our part in placing Jesus on the cross and driving the nails through his torn flesh. Our first reaction may be that of Judas. I don't want to admit that I could have done that. But don't despair. Instead, toss aside all that denial. Just throw it away. Get rid of that denial and listen to the whisper of Jesus from the cross as he looks at you. Perhaps it might sound something like this. My child, denial indeed closes the door on many graces and mercy. Where denial is operative, there is no openness to divine assistance. No openness to sorrow and regret, no assurance of mercy, no reconciliation, and no transformation of fault into faith and a deeper friendship with me in the bath of reconciliation, which I am dying to share with you. Regina, Jenny, let her rest.